financial inclusion hi students today we are going to learn about financial inclusion financial inclusion is the delivery of financial services at affordable cost to vast sections of disadvantaged and low income groups the term financial inclusion is defined as the process of ensuring timely access to financial services and adequate credit where needed by vulnerable groups such as the weaker sections and low income groups at an affordable cost it can be viewed as a process of enabling access to credit improving banking services or as a process of developing social and economic infrastructure available to the public in short financial inclusion is not only about money and savings but about directly eradicating the state of social exclusion existing in the economy financial inclusion is defined as the availability and equality of opportunities to access the financial services it refers to a process by which individuals and businesses can access appropriate affordable and timely financial products and services these include banking loan equity and insurance products financial inclusion efforts typically target those who are unbanked and underbanked and directs sustainable financial services to them they may not meet minimum eligibility criteria laid by banks and hence they will not be able to secure a bank's services banks have requirements such as minimum income minimum credit score age criteria and minimum years of work experience a bank will provide a deposit or a loan to an applicant only if he or she meets these criteria many of the poor people may be unemployed without any previous employment record due to lack of education lack of resources lack of money etc these economically underprivileged people of the society may also not have proper documents to provide to the banks for verification of identity or income every bank has certain mandatory documents that need to be furnished during a loan application process or during a bank account creation process many of these people do not have knowledge about the importance of these documents they also do not have access to apply for the government sanctioned documents financial inclusion aims to eliminate these barriers and provide economically priced financial services to the less fortunate sections of the society so that they can be financially independent without depending on charity or other means of getting funds that are actually not sustainable financial inclusion also intends to spread awareness about financial services and financial management among the people of the society moreover it wants to develop format and systematic credit avenues for the poor people financial inclusion is described as the method of offering banking and financial solutions and services to every individual in the society without any form of discrimination it primarily aims to include everybody in the society by giving them basic financial services without looking at a person's income or savings financial inclusion chiefly focuses on providing reliable financial solutions to the economically underprivileged sections of the society without having any unfair treatment it intends to provide financial solutions without any signs of inequality it is also committed to being transparent while offering financial assistance without any hidden transactions or costs financial inclusion wants everybody in the society to be involved and participate in financial management judiciously there are many poor households in india do not have any access to financial services in the country they are not aware of banks and their functions even if they are aware of bank many of the poor people do not have the access to get services from banks objectives of financial inclusion financial inclusion intends to help the poor people secure financial services and products at economic prices such as deposits fund transfer services loans insurance payment services etc 
it aims to establish proper financial institutions to cater to the needs of the poor people these institutions should have clear cut regulations and should maintain high standards that are exist in the financial industry financial inclusion aims to build and maintain financial sustainability so that the less fortunate people have a certainty of funds which they struggle to have financial inclusion also intends to have numerous institutions that offer affordable financial assistance so that there is a sufficient competition so that clients have a lot of options to choose them there are traditional banking options in the market however the number of institutions that offer inexpensive financial products and services is very minimal financial inclusion intends to increase awareness about the benefits of financial services among the economically underprivileged sections of the society the process of financial inclusion works towards creating financial products that are suitable for the less fortunate people of the society financial inclusion intends to improve financial literacy and financial awareness in the nation financial inclusion aims to bring in digital financial solutions for the economically underprivileged people of the nation it also intends to bring in mobile banking or financial services in order to reach the poorest people living in extremely remote areas of the country it aims to provide tailor made and custom made financial solutions to the poor people as per their individual financial conditions household needs preferences and income levels benefits of financial inclusion the benefits of financial inclusion can be studied on the basis of various stakeholders first benefits to the banker the low cost deposits will offer banks the opportunity to reduce their dependence on bulk deposits from the corporates and better help in the management of liquidity risks and asset liability mismatches the low cost deposits will result in increased profits with the perspectives of medium to long term they will be able to benefit from the fortune at the bottom of the pyramid huge opportunity for the banks to cross sell asset products micro insurance both life and non life insurance micro pension products etc second day benefits to the users the notable benefits to the users of bank accounts will be as follows access to insurance resulting in a cushion against unplanned expenses in the form of emergencies such as illness death in the family or loss of employment help in coming out from the clutches of money lenders receiving social security transfers in the form of old age pensions widow pensions monthly aid to handicapped persons and other benefits accruing from state governments directly into their bank accounts without wasting time in collecting the benefits in cash no need to visit far away places and tolerating tandems of intermediaries involved in the distribution of social security subsidies enabling economic independence and supporting improved economic well being if customized bank accounts are opened then the problem of sending the money periodically to na- native places will be solved migrants sitting in urban centers would be able to send money effortlessly and without paying commission to the intermediaries in the foreseeable future access to loans insurance money transfer and overdraft facilities will become available stronger urge for savings let the money earn for us better life better living and a real income third benefit benefits to the regulators the main role of regulators is to keenly observe the performance of the regulated some of the principal functions of the regulators are to protect the consumers to protect the interest of all other stakeholders to see the activities in broader perspective and to give purposeful direction to achieve larger societal goals if the banks can initiate the urban financial inclusion at their own then the regulators will be relieved of its social responsibility the fifth benefit is benefits to the technology providers 
the benefits to the technology providers are wider markets for smart cards sense of satisfaction by way of contributing to national social agenda opportunity of new business the fourth benefit is benefits to intermediaries the intermediaries stand to benefit by three ways number 1 additional income how so ever small it may be but the additional income will come to the intermediaries this income will come without any additional investments additional clientele the financially excluded persons opening the account through them are likely to stick to them for their other needs that way the urban intermediaries stand to gain indirect benefits also third one brings greater honor and dignity working as extended hands of banks the intermediaries are more likely to earn better respect and dignity for them in the society the sixth benefit is benefits to the society at large the benefits of financial inclusion to the society are as follows the financial inclusion will encourage the central and state government to shift the subsidies distribution form in that system to direct in the hands of target groups by way of directly crediting their account distribution cost of subsidies as well as social security payments will get substantially reduced this will help in plugging the leakages these leakages are likely to cost more than 1000 billion rupees every year for example grain in the public distribution system passes through 19 levels from farmer to the consumers if these 19 levels are removed from the system then this will result into substantial savings in the form of subsidy distribution costs the seventh benefit is benefits to the government the benefits of financial inclusion to the government are as follows remove the inefficiency from the system possibility of making social security transfers such as old age pensions widow pensions etc directly into the bank account of beneficiaries through the electronic transfer this will help in minimizing the transaction costs accounts with also help in plugging the leakages in the distribution network and this will benefit the society at large possibility of stopping the leakage over the next 5 years the central government alone will be spending 11.5 trillion rupees on subsidies including old age pensions health care and national jobs for work program in the current scenario 40% of this will be siphoned off by the system if the same subsidies can be transferred directly into the bank account of beneficiaries then this leakage can be stopped the last benefit is benefits to the economy as a whole the benefits of financial inclusion to the indian economy are as follows an avenue for bringing the additional savings into the formal financial channel boosting the collective economic resources the probability of higher incomes coupled with the reduction in cash economy can lead to overall economic growth better possibility of unlocking the economic potential of the people residing in urban centers possibility of tracking individuals financial history better utilization of consumers protection mechanism high level of financial literacy the chance to achieve faster growth in the country by way of including them as mainstream of the country the urban financial inclusion is a win win opportunity for the left outs for the banks for the intermediaries and for the economy as a whole because of growing incomes better access to communications and media improving awareness levels aspirations of the urban left outs are on the rise banks can ignore this opportunity at their own peril need of the hour is awaken start and grab the opportunity aggressively